सहवीर्यम कर तेजस्वीनावदी तमस्तु शांति 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 हरि नमस्ते हेलो एवरीवन वी आर हियर with the co-producers of the Karate Yoga Festival, a very interesting person to be our first international interview to the Namaste Entrevista, Namaste Interview Program. So please introduce yourself, Dan. So hello everyone, I'm uh, Daniel Enner, I'm from Geneva, Switzerland. And uh, I founded the Geneva Yoga Festival uh, in 2010 in Geneva. I know Claire from Geneva, and that's how we got inspired to create the Parachi Festival. Yes, Claire is the producer of the Brazilian version of this yoga festival. Now we are in 2018, and we are on the second edition of this festival. There is uh, a lot of Brazilian teachers here, but also international guests as Dani. And Dani, the first question that we are going to say, it's about the beginning. It's about Mesharashi, the Aries, Sidero Aries. How did you start? What is your what was your first contact in the world of yoga and this kind of stuff? Okay. So I personally discovered yoga as to the yes. I, I, dis I discovered yoga when I was studying in California in San Francisco. And I took my first Iyengar yoga class in 2002. 2002. 2002 was so my first yoga. 16 discovery. years. 16 years ago. Yes. And before that, I was not finding my place. I was a little bit uh, struggling to to find my journey in this life, and I was I was stuck in my head, negative and a little bit angry about this life, and the injustice, and feeling something was missing. And how was this first contact in California? What did happen? You went to a class, you went to a... Yeah, so, so I was a waiter in the restaurants. Okay. And California, San Francisco is a little bit of the mecca of yoga. Yes. You have a Starbucks in every corner, yes. and a yoga studio in every corner. Yes. So I was seeing all this yoga studio, and I would look at the flyer, and I would be like a little bit... You know, I was a little bit uh, scared. I was living with a lot of fears, you know? And then I was a waiter in a restaurant, and I, I would see people coming with their yoga mats, talking about yoga. And one time I asked some people who came every day, what, what's happening, you talk about yoga, what's going on? And they tell me, come to the yoga studio tomorrow, we offer you a class. Great. I was like, okay, I go, you know? And I do, I go in the class, and it's the first time I felt home. And I felt, here I am, that I found what I'm looking for. Great, so in this way we go to the second question. It's going to be about the values. It's Rishabha, Rashi, it's Sidereal Taurus. It relates much about what we value in life. Not only money, but our inner values. And you said that you were stressed, working, there was no much point in life because there was no such a goal there, it was so clear. What was the thing? It was the peace inside. What was the value of yoga that you found that, oh, this is what I'm searching for? So coming from Switzerland, it's a very uh, Cartesian culture. Yes. We are in the mind. There, there's not really awareness of emotional body. There's not really awareness of physical body or spiritual connection. This is not uh, in the... No, this no, is no. not... You don't talk about this, your emotion. You keep it to yourself. You're supposed to be strong. You need to go to work. You need to have a family, you need to make money, and you need to shut up. And be a machine. And be a the machine class. until you retire. And when you retire, maybe you can enjoy life when you're 65. If you are not dead. If you're not dead, or your knee's broken, okay. or sickness. So, so that's the society, European society, Swiss society. So you were born in Swiss? I'm born in Geneva, I'm born in Switzerland. My parents are doctors, scientists, psychiatrists. I come from a very Swiss-German, intellectual family. You're here to work, make money, put money on the side, 
and just work and take care of your family. Two, two three things. And you're not here to be an artist, you're not here to be happy, you're not here to yes, discover, you you're not here to be you're here. here to be a machine. You're here to be a machine. So that were the values that you were brought up into this world and when you, you, when you found yoga, what were the values there that was most like astonishing for you? All this exists, wonderful. So for me, the, the, the biggest, ex, the first class was to feel back in my body. Okay. I feel my power. Okay. I was in a warrior two pose and okay. I was like, ah, I'm back home. Okay. I'm back in my body. You feel yourself. You feel yourself. You feel your ground. You feel your own connection to yourself. Great. Great experience. Which I felt disconnected. Again, I come from a family intellectual. So, we go to the third question now. It's about initiation, initiatives. We go to Mithun Arash, that is Sidereo Gemini. Where you start to look around, you discover something, and you want to play with it. You want to know how it works, you want to know everything about it. You read magazines, you do yoga and this kind of stuff. How was this process? You get, you got the first experience there in the studio, and then what happened? So when I do my first yoga class, the teacher after the class come to me, is like, how many years you do yoga? And I'm like, it's my first class. He's like, no, it's not possible. You're just natural in the pose. You seem very connected. And they tell me you need to teach yoga. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, I don't what? Know, yeah. And I don't think of myself as a teacher or leader or, or guide. I just think, you know, a bit of esteem problem, you know. Okay. So people tell me you're amazing, good energy. You should teach. Like, what's going on? I don't understand. Like I don't Whoa. see me. Yeah, it's like you know. Then they start to think, and and then things start to move very fast. That was in 2002, and in 2003 I go back to my country, Geneva, okay. and I discovered an amazing yoga studio. I go there every day. I do yoga once or twice a day, and uh, I do a small teacher training. And the the boss of the studio is like, teach yoga now. Yeah. What do you mean? I don't speak Sanskrit, I do 50 hour teacher training, I don't know anatomy. I just started, it's like, you're good, you have good energy, start yoga. And I was like, this is overwhelming, you know? So it took me one year to, to feel, to go to class, to observe the different styles of yoga. But it is one year after the course? Yeah. Or so it was 2003, 2004? Yeah, I did my teacher training in 2004 in Geneva, 50 okay. hour, very small. And then I go to the yoga studio, I meet many people. And, and you I say one year practicing? It took, and the... Yeah, one year like kind of practicing and, and connecting to myself and preparing myself. And then a year later, in October 2005, I teach my first class in the morning at 7 a.m. Because I tell my teacher I'm scared to teach at noon in front of 20 people. Can I please start a new class very early so I can be alone in the studio and just get used to being in front? of the people and start to to share what I learned, you know, and my life experience. So I start with one student, two, three, four, five, six students, and then every morning the same students come, seven students come every morning to the class. And you know, it starts, that was the baby, the seeds of, of the so teaching. So this is the word baby. Now we go to uh, Sidero Cancer, Karakarashi, the place where you start to feel something. Deeper. There is something deeper there. When you were practicing by yourself, there was one experience. When you were learning, well, there was one another experience in the teacher course training. But when you start to feel people to look at you and to see, oh, you're my teacher, you're my guide, you're my whatever. How was this process inside you? To have this kind of courage, to have this kind of responsibility, how was it for you to handle these emotions? It was overwhelming in goodness because my, my it was still kind of a clearly clearing the minds from past negative thinking or not being sure, being in doubt, you know. So the teaching was giving me energy and it was giving me a connection back to myself. Physical body and uh, emotional body, and then people will give me, people will tell me, go teach there, go teach in the United Nations. I'm like United Nations, me? Why? I'm not a scholar. I'm not a doctor. 
and I started teaching the United Nations. And then people give me a private class with director of bands. Really, you know, super wealthy, super important, people who run big banks. I start to teach them in the house. So I'm like, okay, something is up, you know. I don't know what I'm, I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm getting old. It's working. It's, it's working. working. It's and, I'm, and I'm not doing marketing, I'm not doing flyer business. I'm just showing up. I wake up, I go, and people tell me, please go teach this person. And then I teach in the World Trade Organization, I teach in the World Economic Forum. I start to teach in the very powerful institutions. So private directors and big plays, private schools, I teach the teacher, I teach the kids. Everything, after two years of teaching, I'm teaching full time. So that was the first change from a baby, not being sure, to like, okay, I have power, I have energy. And now this energy is manifesting into the world and then through the yoga. We get to the fifth question about power and manifestation. These are the main issues about Simharashi, the sidereal uh, lion. And how was this experience of this Cartesian mind there three, four years ago, four or five years ago? being a waiter and then going to study yoga and then going to do training courses and then starting to go teaching yoga and then giving classes to people in the world back. How was this experience to your ego, to your uh, state of being centered, of, of your vanity? How was this process? It was a little bit too challenging to deal with this amount of people saying, oh, you're so good, go, you're, maybe I don't know if people are saying you're the best, but something like this, people are encouraging. How you handle this sensation of being stimulated and go there and show yourself and have the courage to go to this kind of level? Was this... It was this a little bit like this. Uh, problematic <laughs> yeah. things were falling yeah, apart? Exactly. <laughs> Is this what you're saying to me? Is this a saying? Please, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> what happened? What happened? More or less like this. For me it was very natural because I felt I was always in this energy since I was a kid. I was always playing, I was always in the movement. So for me it was just being home. It was not... It, what was difficult was to change from coming to the center and, and connecting to this power and clearing the mind. For me that was the work, was to clear the mind of doubts and of not knowing. But for me it was very natural because I was in the environment. I was home. Your, so, own, your own element there, doesn't matter the person, yeah. it's, um, it's up to you there, I'm here. Please come in, let's yeah. do some yoga. Yeah. And I will not change my energy, I will not change because people tell me you're good. Of course it feels nice when people give you good feedback. But for me it was natural. It didn't feel... That's why people tell me to teach right away, because it was natural. It was already my energy. You know, before I teach yoga, I was already in the, in the yoga energy. Forever, since I'm very young. So it was just coming back home. Yeah. Is this the main, the, yes, this is the main purpose of yoga, being coming back home and yeah. being yourself yeah. again and feeling connected. So it was very natural, everything comes into place after it was just meeting the right person, bringing me to this festival, to this workshop. It just was very fast after once I opened We are almost in the festival.